Thank you for listening to the Lost Signals Discusses Philosophy, Narrative, and the Mechanics of Criticism. Editing and Engineering by Jonathan Ian Manzer. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lost Signals Talks, TED Talks. Today we're doing John McWhorter's Texting is Killing Language, JK. LOL. Yes. I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer, here with Rich Berry. How you doing? Stephen Ramosi. Aloha. And Scott Thurlow. And I'm helping to kill language. As, definitely. As so, usual. This is a discussion um, about whether texting is, as the title say, uh, somehow grammatically incorrect and destroying language. Yeah. Contributing or, to the downfall of our yes. use of proper language, we'll say. Or if it's a <clears throat> new form of communication. Mm. So I'm going to give a brief overview, going a little bit different than he tackles it in the uh, actual work, but there are four uh, quadrants of language. There is casual speech, which is the first that developed. It's how we discuss every single day. What uh, came next was uh, formal written language, uh, which is when you think of like writing an essay for school or Or a report or a letter, maybe businesses or something like that. It's a, um, there's a strict grammatical structure to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is formal speech, which is the, I suppose, the rarest of all of these, as uh, it is speaking like you formally write. Yeah. Uh, and when you think of, uh, I guess, the Gettysburg like Address is a good one, like exactly. Uh, or just someone giving a formal... Uh, Winston Churchill speech or exactly, something. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're speaking exactly how you write. And texting, the argument that uh, McWhorter is making is... Uh, kind of a new form of language, and even though like p- perhaps graffiti could be considered beforehand, but uh, texting is uh, casual writing and writing like you speak. And as a linguist myself, I agree with that premise, but I want to know what you guys think about it. So <laughs> I've said this to you guys like offcast before. It's sort of my own personal thing, but back in the day, like uh, even before texting, like AOL, right? I was at that time, maybe I'm dating myself, but still adamant about like proper capitalization, proper gram- radical usage, and so forth, right? But I get the. F- Eventually, I realized that like I understand why people don't do it. It's not necessary, and as you said, it's sort of like at this point in my life, I've sort of softened to that. Mm-hmm. I don't mind it. Like I, I do agree largely with his point that like it's almost like a subsect of a dialect in a sense, and it's convenient. Like for a modern daily usage, yeah, it's basically writing like you would speak to a casually to a friend just to exchange information but you don't need it doesn't need to have that for- formality attached to it so like i'm not as against it i guess as i used to be or would have been so like but i do think it's interesting that it is sort of like again it's own little sub little <clears throat> creole almost kind of in a sense yeah it's it's interesting it's it's kind of a, a way of uh passing along a point in in, in the easiest terms and i think that's the point of most language to an extent. Like there's a reason that in a formal speech, you speak informal language and it's because you're trying to appeal to like a broader audience yeah. or something like that. Well, you're presenting information in a certain manner. Right. And, uh, the fact that, you know, this casual text language has, has come up is because, Text wasn't always an easy way of uh, talking to people. It wasn't like a casual form of uh, communication. Communication, yeah. you would have to think about something, write it down, you know, mail it to somebody, and they would get it two weeks later or whatever. And now, right, that it wasn't it's instantaneous. Instant, yeah. In the same way as speeches, <clears throat> there uh, it opens up the door to like have a casual form of that come about and i think that's i think it's interesting like and i think that it's well worth studying like exploring how yeah. that affects not only people in the way that they casually speak to each other but it, it's certainly coming into or affecting the way that formal 
uh, speaking happens, such as giving a TED talk about casual speech <laughs> and using words like LOL and like, you know, haha or JK, whatever. whatever, yeah. JK. So I think that's, I think that's all kind of, um, uh, really interesting, uh, things to think about getting out of this TED talk. I think also like a lot of it is saving time too. Like you have like, yeah, kind for of, sure. like from the speed of thought, basically these conversations are going on and it borrows a little bit from shorthand, like the, uh, yeah. used to use. Yep. Or probably still use. <laughs> Actually, both of you, uh, you made interesting, uh, when you're talking about speed, because we did a episode on Gricean pragmatics. Mm -hmm. If you remember that. Yep. And check that one out. One part of it discussed that one of the things you do in languages, you don't give more information that's necessary. Uh, if you're long winded, like all of us mm -hmm. on this, uh, podcast mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, it could be lost uh, in the shuffle no it could be expedited and yeah. like we're kind of betraying like if you spoke the way we did in a natural conversation it would seem you're dominating the conversation or uh, it would seem stilted and yes. to, to a degree exactly. this is why people don't talk to us <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that's why we have to talk to avoid yeah. at people but that's why you never see like there's very few people i know write more than one text message in length uh, when they're trying to, aside from Chris. Well, <laughs> I was just about to say that. Well, actually, <laughs> guess who's not here today? But, Sorry, yes. Chris. Chris Morgan, the exception you're going to, another bus. to that rule. But, <laughs> but you're right. Like In general, that is, of course, true. Yeah. But, so do you think it'd be weird? Now now that, uh, so one of the points he makes, I, sh I should uh, start this off with, uh, is that, Text messaging as a language is starting to, uh, is in the. Evolving. Yeah, it, it, definitely evolving. And, uh, like, variations are coming up and mm. they're competing. And if you follow, like, the linguistic theory of, like, the evolution of language, it's that competition between the right. two are coming up to dominate. Um, do you think it's weird now, as you were saying earlier, about the formal speech? Now, if people write to you, uh, text messages very formally, is that strange, or do you expect the casual? Well, if you're asking me personally, it's not strange because, again, I don't mind it. And again, I was almost more—I was more emphatic about it earlier. So, if, <laughs> yes, are you, it's, asking, are you asking like strange to us or in general? Either, however you want to interpret my question. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll finish. I'll answer. Like to me, it's not all that strange. Although I can, can I see why you might. Can I finish it? It's like a text message unto itself. But no, like to answer. I wouldn't find it like, oh, that's weird that they like, you know, use proper grammatic, like as if it were like for formal writing as in a text. But you don't see it all that often, sure. But it, it's not off putting, I guess, because as you said, like, it's almost like its own little subsection of communication because the technology has allowed us to do it as such. So, Sorry. yeah, so like, I'm, yeah, and not off putting, but I'm, I feel like you don't see it as often. But if you don't, that's obviously fine too. It's almost become like the standard is not to, be as formal, so. I think a lot of it might be generational too. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a good point. Like depending on how how much of how much of this you've grown up with. Yeah, that's like, absolutely a good point. Like younger kids are going to be almost uneligible <laughs> with the amount of like abbreviations that they use. Whereas, like, I would say, like our us, we use like kind like, of like a like hybrid, a mix, like of, a mix yeah, of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. True. Uh, I've had to look up abbreviations when people <laughs> used it because I had no idea what they meant. We don't know, we don't know what the kids are saying anymore nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, t yeah. Never mind. Uh, what I was going to say is, um, I think that it's interesting, and, and actually, it's funny that you say it's a gener ge generational thing, which it certainly is to an extent, but you can tell a lot about, to, to not answer your question at all, but to go off on my own little <laughs> tangent, uh, you can tell a lot about a person based on the way that they text mm. you, right? Like, there are people my age or younger that do send, like, very formal texts. And, like, to me, that shows somebody that, like, for whatever reason, they found uh, some kind of, like, refuge in sticking to the turn, like, sure. sticking to the rules of grammar. Whereas you'll see a lot of people older than me, even, that just send a ton of emojis and uh, you know, mm. weird acronyms and stuff like that. And <clears throat> I don't think either one of those uh, is bad in any way or like any better or, better or worse than the other. Than yeah, the other exactly. But it does tell you a lot about that person when you get a the, the first text from them, especially if like it's somebody you met and you had a conversation with them 
And then you like start a text conversation and the way that they it's always interesting to see like the way that somebody speaks to we'll you call it, we'll call it verbally syntax sort of. and the way that people speak yeah. to you via text and like how different those are. Mm. So I, I always find that kind of it's interesting fu- to look at. It's funny actually, like my uh I've noticed that the older members of my family are making more of an attempt to use abbreviations in their texts. Get down with the kids. Yeah, that would yeah, be, that would be well totally like, radical cool with like, you guys. <laughs> I mean, like, kind of. Like, they they don't care that much about it, but, like, just sure. because they'll, like, see us use it, so then they'll, like, attempt to use it. Yeah, it's it. almost yeah. like a meme unto itself, right, yeah. I was going to say. They throw in a BTW every once in a while. Yeah, sure, but, but it's like... <laughs> But then, like, I I read it in their voice, so it's just, like, <laughs> super weird. Yeah, so, well, that's an aspect, like, a layer that you could, like, you know, like, add on to that because yeah. you know, you're familiar with them, but because it's a different medium, you're not speaking yeah, to so them. Yeah, like, just my dad using the language of, like, a teenage girl. It's just... <laughs> sure. It's, uh, it's, it's jarring. It's, it is funny it's that a weird juxtaposition. That, that you say it that way. I'm, I, I will uh, allow you guys to go in a second, but um, the... The fact that it's almost a completely different language. If you showed somebody a like random teenager's yeah. text message twenty years ago, they would have no fucking idea what yeah. they were talking about. Of course. Well, that was like that was half the fun of it too. Like when we were kids to like have yeah, these have abbreviations language. so that our parents could. Well, it would take them a while to figure out exactly right. what we were talking about. Exactly. So I, I was gonna. I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna <laughs> touch on that, but that also is true. And but you mentioned emojis, which we were sort of talking like offcast or uh, precast before. After we've seen the talk, mm-hmm. now, like, is emojis, it's almost like hieroglyphics, right? Could you have a conversation in text that's entirely emojis? I guess you, yes, could, but again, it, it even loses, you know, it's not as robust as mm. even if you're doing acronyms and, and like even weird, like in joke abbreviations via text. It's not quite the same. It's almost like a sub sub language of that. The problem is emojis don't have like specific right. meanings, right? Exactly. Like, they, or, like they're very they have loose interpretations. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to jump in. To- Address both of the uh, okay. emoji town uh, conversations. One generation does play a huge role, but not just in text messages and slang in and, general. Uh, sure, variation of course. Over, but it's not just that. It's actually, I believe, young women have the most impact in shaping language uh, amongst any group. And then, uh, so it's there's no like our, your parents would definitely look at what you're saying. Not understanding the context of what it means necessarily for that generation, sure, and try to apply. It. So they're adapting into the lexicon, but T-I-L. they don't. It, it's weird because they don't have the context for using it, mm. so they develop it develops their own. Or they uh, have a different context at least. Yeah, when when you see them use it, you go, "This doesn't seem right," <laughs> yeah. and that's because it's. And it's, it's your private language that they're uh, taking. <laughs> sort of. To they're understand. infringing upon sure. my language. But that's how a lot of... Uh, that's, but that's actually, a lot of slang dies because another group will uh, sort of co-op, co-op it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's pretty much... Uh, like, lit's pretty much done now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that happened, like, t- yesterday... Trump Jr. said something was lit, and everybody was like, no, lit, mm. we're not using lit anymore. <laughs> it's now forget it. because <laughs> yeah. of that. Sure, but, but I mean, yeah, that's context. how it works. So I, I, I'm going to bring up a couple like random examples. If anyone has seen the show uh, American Vandal, mm-hmm. which is was pretty was, good. Was yeah, so it was, drew a bunch of dicks. I remember. Yeah, who drew the dicks? <laughs> but there was one like episode where they focused on like, like as if it were like uh, hardcore evidence, a string of text messages, right? And this <laughs> yeah. whole conversation centered around like the use of the word "hey." And how many whys were attached to hey? Like, <laughs> like it, the more whys there are, the more like seductive it was. It was a whole like, like it was a, a amazing little thing. But I think it applies here because it's you cannot do that in any other way, really. Or like it's almost creating like hey, cause, like one of the female characters explained like, oh, if you see a hey, if a girl says hey to you with three hey's, it's like hey, right? <laughs> uh, so but it has like variations. There's an interesting thing about imitation. I want to talk about quickly. Okay. I took a class once upon a time on um, how legally you can see the way they do it. It's actually a science, mm. uh, or at least they're attempting to make it a linguistic sure. science. But uh, you could, it, let's say you kill, uh, if you had a daughter and you killed her and we're trying to make it seem like <laughs> oh, it's a lot. dark. Jesus Christ. No, but this <laughs> is a good scenario, dude. No, but this is actually the scenario we were, we were studying in okay. class. Was a guy who goes daughter trying to pretend she's still alive and, philosophers and are sending fucked text up. messages at, as, uh, if it as, as if it was her. Yeah. yeah. And... It could, to people who didn't know, like, know her well, it passed 
but people who knew her well realized they knew it, it wasn't the right yeah. person because even though you can get the surface elements of right. it wasn't meditation, quite you can't right. Do that. Yeah. Sure. So I didn't mean to bring in death to this <laughs> conversation, but uh, so Not back to your emoji point earlier, though. <laughs> Uh, I have an argument that, or I, I have a term. firm belief that it's body language. It's a representation of that. Mm. If you're being sarcastic, you put it like, uh, like a, uh, yeah. yeah, tongue sticking yeah, sure. you up. If you, uh, like, two smiles, three smiles, all have different meanings. Uh, and just like we have a very nuanced, um, like, use Range. of body language in yeah. our, uh, everyday casual, uh, yeah. language. No, that's absolutely fair. Just like I said, like, to me, it's almost like, Hieroglyphics are technically a language, but that's what emojis are like. To me, like I draw the like comparison there. It's very difficult because for they're pictographic. Yeah. To, uh... Sure. Well, and the other thing is like emojis are even more so like constantly. Basically, every time you want to say a new word, you need to make a new emoji, right? Like, whereas kind of, or you need to or have, like, just redefine the parameters of what. Yeah, or, or you have like, oh, this one means like could have five possible like interpretations. Right, but emojis went from like it's fucking, like runes. fucking four faces when they started out to sure. you know I have an entire goddamn section of them on my phone. It's like <laughs> once once there's a hundred emojis on my phone, it's like a very complicated language at that point, you know. At that point, That's it becomes point. more of a formal language than a casual one because you don't can't do it with the speed necessary for it to be a casual mm -hmm. language. But the, but the thing That's is, true. the the weird thing is, it should be a formal language, but it's still not because emojis mean different things to different people depending on who's using them, how they're using them. Like right. it's way it's, more and, context and there, sensitive. There's a there's a funny thing you 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 just mentioned the like two like laughing faces versus three laughing faces and like that type of stuff, which is <laughs> almost exactly equivalent to like. Ha versus ha ha versus ha ha ha, right? That type of thing, or heh, or whatever. I was get into that, yeah. And I think that uh, those those equivalencies are very interesting, but uh, I think there's more of a. I don't. I actually, I don't. I don't know if this is true. I was gonna say I think there's more of a structure behind the like, no idea what he's talking language about. Uh, versions than the emoji versions, but mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know if that's actually true. Yeah, they're trying to accomplish the exact same thing. Yeah. Through different Just in a, yeah. So I have two things I want to bring up. One was from the talk, and one was uh, another uh, story that Richard was telling us uh, precast. So he was going. Um, McWaters points out that like the use of LOL in texting is not really like what it. It's diverged from what originally was, right? It's not like you're nowadays. You don't really mean like you're actually laughing out loud. It's more like a marker of sympathy. So I think example is like, oh, I have a big test coming up. LOL, and the response is like, LOL, good luck. Right? Yeah, they're not. Nobody's laughing per se about that. <laughs> Hilarious. But it's like it's like a marker of like you're agreeing like they're like okay, I understand your situation. Like yeah, like I'm wishing you like sympathies essentially. Yeah. So Rich, you brought up the thing where like, you good. Oh yeah. Be like his yeah. own thing. You good? You yeah. good? You good? You mean so many different things. Where it's like you good? Like you need any help or oh you're fine. You're yeah. Good. Like it's okay. Yeah. And like some you know, subtlety variations yeah. ranges within that. So I thought that was interesting too, and I I do agree with it. Like yeah, as it evolves, of course, like phrases and acronyms might slightly diverge from where they originally were intended to use but still if you keep up with it, it the language will again mutate itself permutate we'll say into like something decipherable it's actually kind of creepy to watch somebody like have like a text conversation where they're like jovial and like lol like omg like going through all this stuff and like they're just stone-faced <laughs> and then like shut the front like yeah. close their phone and then like go back to the conversation that we we're having yeah. i'm like exactly because it's a what? different, it's a different <laughs> form of communication but there's still like you know it's it's just a yeah. different avenue you yeah. just you just like outlet. completely converted to your interior person <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, your entire your exterior shuts off at that point sure yeah uh, inside i'm laughing yeah <laughs> Outside, I'm concentrating. <laughs> I'm not literally <laughs> chuckling, but uh, you know, I'm with you. Essentially, is what it says. Is what that's, you're saying when you do that's that. That's pretty good. So Rafflecopter. Sure. <laughs> I the still fuck. don't know is that, what that means. Is that old now? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I guess the audience will tell us if we're old men or not in terms of well, texting acronyms. I'm certainly an old man. Yes. <laughs> sure. Anything really to language. But do you guys have any final thoughts? No, I just think like yeah, it's interesting that. I have, again, changed my view a bit uh, on this very topic, and it was a really good talk. You should definitely check it out. We'll put up a link. But yeah, like I, I do I think it's just it's going to be cool to see like perhaps how it evolves from now, because even some of the things he said are like a bit outdated, or like not quite, from like this talk was like, what, 2008 or something like that? I can't remember. Well, I really? Yeah. Ele uh, 12 or 11. Okay, this is still a couple years ago, is all I'm yeah. saying. So like even the things he, were, like, he was pointing out. Yeah, damn, that's are, more than half a decade. Yeah, exactly. So in <laughs> yeah. that time span, is all I'm saying. What like, have I been doing with my life? <laughs> 
You haven't been keeping on texting, obviously. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but even so, like Whoa. it's it was interesting to see like how they change and how like the use of them meaning sometimes again diverge a bit from where they originally came from. As will mm-hmm. any language. It's exactly again, we're, as much as, this is constantly evolving, and there's and you guys have brought up like emoji saying standardization hasn't quite happened yet. Yeah, yeah. that's so, a good point. Exactly true. Uh, We'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, we'll yeah. all be speaking in uh, texting. Well, true. I, was actually, I, I think if standardization happens, then it's not necessarily a ca- casual language anymore. I don't think that standardization no, can really... Like, there is a standard for all these things, but, like, it depends on who you're talking to. Uh, in the same way as, like, regular. Uh, thing is, so if I wink at you, like... <laughs> How can I get you to never do that again? <laughs> <laughs> give him a give him a frowny face. Yeah. It's gonna be that five kind of, of them. This is gonna be that kind of wing. Yeah. <laughs> I could do without that. Actually, no. I, I, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Like, it, it, it will take on a meaning over time. To the one variation will dominate until another variation takes its place. Right, uh, it'll, never, yeah. it'll never cement, but it will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, It'll have a wider spread of meaning. It'll be like so, memes quoted. Yeah. So actually, I do have one fun thought. You made me think of it, or I thought of it, that we discussed this before. For example, like vulgar Latin versus formal Latin, at least when that would happen. Like vulgar Absolutely. essentially took over it, and there was a, like, at that time, those who were against it were vehemently against it because they felt it was corrupting, in quotes, their language in some way. Well, <laughs> French is definitely a corrupting language, sure. uh, especially when it comes to Latin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. fr- I know if any French can corrupt me anytime they want. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Put it in emojis. <laughs> What's the hey. French emoji? There's got to be like a guy with a baguette and a beret. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you can find it. <laughs> or if not, you should make it. Speak okay. baguette guy slash beret or woman, either one, mm-hmm. to me. Well, I'm Jonathan E. Manzer. <laughs> <laughs> Here with Rich Perry. Yeah. <laughs> French, Stephen Hermosa. This convo is lit AF. <laughs> It's got the snake face, frowny face, poop head. Good night. <laughs> Thank you for listening to The Lost Signals Discusses Philosophy, Narrative, and the Mechanics of Criticism. Editing and Engineering by Jonathan Ian Manzer. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.